In this movie, you create a simple script to automate the thread creation process. In the bottom left corner, right-click and choose Open Editor window. The editor lets you evaluate multiple lines of scripts simultaneously and save your script to disk. In the first line, type in prev equals dollar sign. This line of code establishes a new variable called prev based on the currently selected object. The dollar sign represents the current selection. If thread 001 is selected, then prev becomes the object name thread 001. In the second line, type in new equals instance prev. This second line establishes a new variable called new. It becomes assigned to a new object, which is an instanced version of prev, the previously selected object. If prev is representative of thread 001, then new is representative of a new object named thread 002, an instance of thread 001. In the third line, type in select new. The simple line of code switches the selection from the previously selected object to the new one. If thread 001 was selected a moment ago, now thread 002 is selected. The fourth line is more complex as it deals with the wiring. Type in the following. The script now invokes the parameter connect function. It is connecting the path constraint percent value of the previous object, prev or thread 001, to the path constraint percent value of the new object, new or thread 002. It is also adding the offset of 1.5% you established earlier, percent plus 0 0.015. Save this script to a location on your hard drive Call it makeTreads.ms. To test the script, first make sure thread 001 is selected. From the script editor's tools menu, click on Evaluate All. A new thread appears in the right place. Now here's the fun part. At this time, the new object, thread 002, is selected. If you were to run the script one more time, the prev variable will be assigned to thread 002, the selected object. The new variable will be assigned to an instance of thread 002, which will be an object named thread 003. The script will automate the process from link to link. Instead of running the script from the editor dialog, here's how you can make a UI icon for it. From the Customize menu, choose Customize User Interface. Go to the Toolbars tab. Click the New button to create a new toolbar. Give it a name, such as My Tools. Close the dialog when done. Select the text that make your script in the Editor window, and then drag it to the newly created toolbar. An icon is created. Make sure the last created thread is selected and click the new icon on the My Tools toolbar. The script kicks in and a new thread link is created and properly placed with each click on the icon. Sometimes you may get the offset value a bit off when you close the chain. In this case, there is a significant gap after you created your 66th link. This tells you that you need to adjust your offset value a bit. Select all threads but thread 001 and delete them. Change the offset value in the script from 0 0.015 to 0 0.0156. A bit of trial and error is typically needed here to get the correct value. Obviously, this offset value will be different from one project to the next, but the script itself will work equally well in other situations. Imagine a bicycle chain or an escalator. The same concept would still apply, although you wouldn't use the follow option for an escalator. Save the script and drag its text again to create a new icon on the My Tools toolbar. Make sure thread 001 is selected and recreate the chain. This time, the gap should look better after the 64th link.
If you wish, you can delete the previous icon. Close the script editor window. Click the time configuration icon. Choose the rescale time option and set the animation length to 200. This will slow the motion. Now let's imagine you want to slow down the tread motion between frames 80 and 120. Instead of editing each and every tread, you only need to edit the dummy master object. Select dummy 001 and right click it. Choose Curve Editor from the Quad menu. Make sure the percent track is highlighted and from the Curves menu choose Apply E-Scurve. Note that applying an E-Scurve is just one way of controlling speed. Ultimately you could simply keyframe the percent track if you prefer. Expand the percent track and select the E-Scurve track. Use Insert Key to add another key to that curve. Choose Move Keys again. Select all keys and set them to a smooth tangent. Adjust the curve so that it slows down between frames 80 and 120. Test the animation. As you can see, once you edit the position of the master object on the path, even when animated, all threads respond to that change. Dismiss the Curve Editor window and go back to frame 0. Press H to display the Select From Scene dialog. Select the path, the dummy, and all threads. Shift Move to instance the selected objects and create the left tank chain. If you want, edit the speed of the second dummy to have the left chain behave differently. Perhaps you could invert the east curve to have the chain move backwards, which could be useful if the tank is to rotate in place. You may get a smoother display, especially when scrubbing, if you set your time display to frames and ticks. In the next and last movie, you learn to create an expression to have the steel wheels rotate by the correct amount, based on the chain's movement.